everyone welcome back to my channel i hope that you are doing well in today's video i am going to be talking all about motivation as some of you may know my father passed away five months ago now on christmas eve that's five months right december january february march april may yes five months ago this week actually the past five months have been a blur if i'm being quite honest they've also taught me a lot so i thought that i would come on and share with you some of the things that have helped me get through the past five months and more specifically work through the time where i was really struggling to find motivation again loss can pop up in our lives in a variety of ways maybe you've lost someone to death the way that I have. Maybe you've lost a job or a friendship or you've gone through a breakup. There's so many ways that we can experience loss in our lives and it can be challenging to find motivation and inspiration again when that happens. So today I'm going to be sharing with you five things that have helped me over the past five months to work through those times when I'm struggling with motivation because let me tell you, I have struggled. I have some notes here on my phone that I am going to refer to as I go through this. The first thing that has helped me is getting comfortable with doing the bare minimum. Accepting the fact that I do not need to be an overachiever during this time has been really transformational for me. If you, like me, identify as a perfectionist, it can be really difficult to let yourself just be and to accept that that's enough and have grace with yourself that that's enough. And this applies to a variety of different areas. So for instance, starting with my work, during those days and weeks and even months when I was struggling the most with feeling motivated, I ended up needing to allow myself kind of the privilege and the freedom to only hold myself to doing one task per day. It would be something small and something that was achievable. And that's a theme that you will hear me talk about more throughout this video is this idea of going after achievable goals during this time, goals that are achievable for you. With work, I would hold myself to only doing one task per day. That literally could mean my only task for today is to sit down and respond to my emails or my only task for today is to sit down and do one thing with the data or sit down and even just look at my experiment. Whatever line of work you're in, you can identify what those little tasks may be, but that was something that I ended up having to do. And I can remember talking with my fiance, Sam, and saying, oh gosh, I'm feeling emotional, sorry. <laughs> I can remember talking with Sam and saying, I feel really guilty that I can do that. It's such a privilege that I can decide I'm only gonna work on one task per day. And he said, you know, you just need to honor the fact that this loss happened during a time in your life where you can do that. So there definitely has been an element of guilt there for me and I think that goes along with again being a perfectionist and always trying to be an overachiever and so just getting content, accepting, and becoming more comfortable with doing the bare minimum. Same goes for keeping up my home. I'm someone who cleans my house weekly and I have held myself to continuing to do that, but I'm telling you, it's the bare minimum. The floors might get vacuumed, maybe a dry Swiffer gets drug around, but the wet Swiffer hasn't come out in a while. <laughs> just letting that be enough. I put a note here, doing just enough to feel good about it, but nothing more. <laughs> Tip number two, sometimes there are days or weeks when it is really hard. So this is when I was in the depths of it, wanting to do absolutely nothing each day. During these times, it's when I really try to make it a point to do something for myself and something for my space. For instance, today I got up, I put a load of laundry in, I took out the trash, those were the things for my space. And then I went ahead and repainted my nails, put on a little bit of makeup, right? So did some things for myself. You can identify what it is that makes you feel good. Something that you can do for yourself, something that you can do for your space. Sometimes it's just these small efforts that can make all the difference in the way that we feel. And you never know, you might get on a roll, but you'd be surprised how far those small efforts can actually go and how we feel how we interact with the world, and just what we get ourselves up to. Number three is going back to basics. So here's what I mean. One thing that I have done throughout this entire time is going to sleep early at night. Not only do I need more sleep in this time that I've been grieving, I 
genuinely look forward to going to bed and more specifically going to bed early at night kind of having that ritual maybe i have a little bit of tea before bed i look forward to climbing in and just knowing that that's kind of like my safe haven to relax just allowing myself that time to heal has been really transformative so i try to get into bed in the nine o'clock hour if not 8 30. another basic is getting outside I follow someone on Instagram and she's openly spoken about how getting outside more often was really transformative for her in managing her depression. It can just be the littlest things, like even just walking around in your backyard. I have a good excuse because I have to take Franny out throughout the day. Sam and I go on walks with her in the evening, either before or after dinner. Just getting out of the house at least once a day to get out in nature and breathe some fresh air. Breathe diaphragmatically in your stomach, just take it in, even with the allergies, uh, has been really beneficial and a good constant, again, just getting back to the basic things. The last basic for me has just been eating healthy home-cooked meals. This has been important for me because I am someone who tends to lose weight when I'm going through a stressful period and I ended up losing quite a bit of weight with my dad's passing. I have had to make it a point to make sure that I am eating frequently throughout the day, but no matter how your body responds to loss, I think we can all benefit from eating healthy home-cooked meals more often. So one way that I've ensured this is by kind of setting myself up for success. So we prep chicken, on Sunday night so that we have chicken for lunches throughout the week. I can throw together a quick chicken salad or a sandwich during the day and I'm making sure I'm getting those nutrients that I need. I've also been prepping fruit for the week, cutting up some strawberries and some mango. I found it's a lot more affordable than buying it pre-cut at the store, but no judgment there because I was doing that for months before finally realizing how much more I get if I just cut it up myself for the same price. I've been doing that for myself too and it's nice to just have it to snack on throughout the day. I talk a lot about the value of home-cooked meals on this channel and I know it might seem a little bit repetitive at times. I was recently reflecting on why I think it matters so much and I realized that it's because I didn't have that really growing up. My mother wasn't someone that was making me chicken soup when I was sick. Now as an adult, I do that for myself and it really is an expression of self-love to care for myself in that way. And I realized how powerful it can be, not just for our bodies, but also our souls, our spirits, our minds. I think I've really just seen kind of the comparison or the contrast of when you have that versus when you don't. And so I'm thankful that I have the privilege to give that to myself and I really just can't recommend it enough, especially when you are going through a difficult time to try to make it a point to cook at least you know one meal during the week for yourself. I think is really valuable. Tip number four is to find small and achievable ways to connect with others. I'm someone that definitely tends to isolate and I have isolated myself a lot during this time, but I also have had a couple of friends that I've been able to connect with. My recommendation would be to find those friends, sort of the low maintenance friends, the people that you can really be yourself around, try to connect with them, go places with them. I recently went to this little flower market with my friend Kayla. She had been there before and they were having a little event and so we went and it was a really achievable goal for both of us. Uh, we mentioned it when we got back in the car that we're both homebodies, but it was achievable for us to go and do that and we met some new people and it was just good to get out and continue to live my life actively despite going through the grief. And then my last tip is to do something that you enjoyed doing when you were younger. So I have been reading a lot of non-academic books. Um, I've actually been reading a lot of fiction and romance and it's been really fun. Yeah, it's nice to just do something that's kind of purely for pleasure. There's no metric around it. I'm not measuring my performance in any way in doing that activity and it's allowed me to kind of reconnect with that version of myself that enjoyed creative writing and enjoyed reading those types of things when I was younger. When we sort of nurture that aspect of ourselves, it actually carries over into all the other aspects of our lives. A lot of my inspiration and motivation, I think, comes through a creative mindset. And 
any way that I can, again, nurture that, I think has been beneficial during this time because it's helped me to kind of grasp back onto that inspiration, which I think is where a lot of my motivation ultimately comes from. The final thing that I'll leave you with is this metaphor that I thought of earlier today, which is to think of motivation as this friend who has left and you are eagerly waiting their return. So expect that they will be back now at any moment, any day, and during the time when you're waiting for them to return, you want to care for yourself and care for your space so that you're prepared and ready to go when they do arrive again. That is kind of how I have thought about my motivation during this time, and I found that it does always return. Doing what I can to continue to care for myself and my space, even if it is the bare minimum, it's allowed me to continue to make progress whenever I have those good moments or I have those good days. If you have experienced loss recently and you have anything that you would like to share with us down in the comments below, I absolutely welcome that. As always, I want to thank you for being here and I will see you in my next video. Bye.